Hi, my name's Kieran from 81 Vintage and I'm going to show you how to make a coffee table from parquet flooring today. So I bought this frame on eBay for £15 and I'm going to put parquet flooring on the top to turn it into a really big statement piece. So I paid £15 for it. It's raining, which is why I'm wearing this lovely headgear today, but we've got to get on because this is in the way. So what I'm going to do is I've got some studding to make a frame with and I'm going to just measure the width of the frame, which is 75 centimetres, and cut two pieces that are that size. Then I'm going to put the two pieces together and I'm going to measure the width of the two pieces together and subtract that from 75 centimetres, which will give me the size for the other sides. So I'm going to cut those and I'll show you how I put them together. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of block of wood that's the same thickness and draw a line on the two longest boards and now I know that I need to drill two holes in between that line. You want to drill this on your longest boards and that's just come through to the other side so I'm going to do that on all ends of the long boards. So it's brightened up a bit so I don't need my flappy ears anymore but now it's time to assemble the frame so I've actually got a third piece because my piece of chipboard that I'm going to put on the top isn't big enough, isn't 75 centimetres wide, it's actually smaller so I need to put this joining piece in the middle so that when it gets screwed together and I have that join it's hidden underneath. So I've roughly laid my frame out and what you want to do is you want to put it on a really flat surface for when you're putting it together. So I'm going to use some glue and some multi-purpose screws and I'm going to screw the whole thing together. So this is my chipboard, it's an old piece of an old wardrobe that we got given and I'm going to cut it to size. So I need to measure it out to be 75 centimetres but my circular saw has a 3 centimetre guide on it between the, the guide and the blade so I need to subtract that off so actually I need to measure out 72 centimetres and then put a guide on here and cut that off and I need to make two of those so, and cut the other one to fill in that extra gap. Okay so I've put some glue on the base of the frame and I've cut my two pieces of chipboard aside so I have put them on top of the glue and put the other small piece next to it and then that is the perfect size and now I'm going to use my air compressed nailer to just put nails all the way around the edge of it Now that's all secured, the last thing to do is to give it a quick sand with some 60 grit sandpaper just to take off those edges on the chipboard. And there you have our base ready to put our parquet floor on. So what I've done is I've marked across, so that I've found my middle piece and then I've also measured a horizontal or vertical line, whatever it is, so that I can work out where the middle is so that I don't end up with a wonky line as I go. So I'm going to be gluing these down, I'm gluing them face down so that the bitumen side's on the top and I find this gets a really good finish but I'm going to need some more glue than that. And I'm using Pink Griff, so this is an instant grab solvent based adhesive. I used the non-solvent one on a project recently and it was rubbish so don't buy that one. So I'm just going to put lots of glue on it and then I'm going to start putting these down on the glue and you just sort of put them down and smush them about a bit so that they get a really good contact and then you just work your way through so and then don't worry if that glue comes up to the top because that will sand off later and then you just work your way out until the whole thing's covered and then when you get to the edges you'll end up with the edges having too much on them don't try and cut them now because we'll cut them later um, but you just want to make sure that these pieces that go around the edge are really secured well 
So I've done this quite a few times and the effects look fantastic. So what I've done is I've got a three centimeter margin on my circular saw and I've cut it from the underside and just ran it along the edge of the stud in to get a nice straight line and I've just cut all of the excess off so then I've got a margin all the way around. Then I'm going to cut it from the top so that I get a really neat line and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But before I do that I'm going to remove all of the screws from the stud in because I don't want my blade to go through them. Okay so I've cut a nice straight line, I'm going to show you on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure in six centimetres because that's going to be my three centimetre margin plus the three centimetres that is already underneath from before and that will give me a nice flush cut all the way through the stud and the chipboard and the table. So I actually had to take off six and a half centimetres because I needed it to cut into the stud in as well. So I've taken off six and a half centimetres all the way around and it's just about cut all the way through so I'll clean this bit up with a chisel um, just so it's all nice and flat and I'm going to do that on all of the sides so that I get this really nice flat finish. So I've been and had a look in my stash and I found this old oak dining table. Someone gave me this for free. It's got a big crack in the bottom of it so it's not really worth anything anymore as a table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this up into strips which is the width of the studding plus the chipboard plus the height of the parquet and then cut it into strips, do 45 degree angles on each strip and then attach them on. So I've added all the mitres all around the edge and then on the edges I put two brads into each of the corners just to bind them together. So now I'm ready to start cleaning up the top piece. So what I've done is I've gone through all my old supplies of flap discs. Now I hoard all my old flap discs just for this process. I use a lot of reclaimed wood so I use these a lot to sand my wood. So I keep all of the old ones and then I use them to clean up the bitumen on projects like this. The discs will get clogged up and then I throw them away. And then once I've cleared off most of it, I'll come back with a brand new shiny one and sand the whole thing off so it's nice and, uh, and smooth. And the way you tell when your disc is full of bitumen is it will start to spread it more than it will take it off. Okay, so if you don't like sanding, this project is definitely not for you. So I've sanded the top and you have to get all the bitumen off pretty much and then you have to go over it with a nice clean flat disc and you have to go over and follow the grain and the pattern of each piece of wood. So you work in each line, you do one line that way and then you do the other line the other way until it's completely clear. Then what I've done is I've rounded over the edges with the angle grinder sanded those then I sanded the edges with 220 using this one now it's pretty much nearly there except I've got to blow all of the gaps out with the air compressor okay so I've showered off after all that sanding now I'm just gonna do some filler around the edge um, this comes white but my piece isn't white, it's oak. So what I do instead is I add in some acrylic paint. So just a small amount of acrylic paint to your filler and then I mix it with normally a spatula or screwdriver and that will give you a really good sort of wood colour match and I use this a lot. So it's just gonna go in the gaps and I'm just gonna rub it all the way along now, but now I need to paint the underside because it looks a bit tatty. I'm going to put one more coat of varnish on this tabletop and then it's going to be done. So I've only put two coats on this, but it's a really good varnish that I'm using. Okay. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so that you can see when we upload new videos. And be sure to head over to our Facebook page at 81 Vintage for to see all our other projects that we're working on.